right, this is our little Halloween thing underneath the stairs. A little crazy in here. We got a ghost here. Hi. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. 
and then I got this crystal ball here. I thought it was really, really cool. See? Ooh. Emma, what do you see inside the crystal ball? I see what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Is it going to be good or bad? It's going to be good. Yay! I see Disney World in your future. Disney World? Yeah. <laughs> and look, we got a little dog. Hello. <laughs> Oh, it mouth moves. <laughs> 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 yeah. Is that a scary roach? <laughs> oh, look, I got a giant spider. I see this one has like, eyes. Woo! And what else is there? Oh, Emma, you want to show this toaster here? Yeah. Oh, see, this is my toaster. It doesn't work much. Okay, let's see. Press the button. There we go. <laughs> phone too. This one is kind of cool. Can I answer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's ringing. Hey, what is, what, 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 what? Are you having a happy Halloween? Yeah. It certainly looks like you are from where I'm standing. Oh, oh, somebody's watching us. This one because it kind of like blasts, right? This is really cool. <laughs> there's bugs in our house. Okay. Oh, there's so many bugs. Look, there's a bug right there, Emma. High five. Yeah. Hey guys, mommy told me there would be some sort of surprise here, but I don't know where she went. I almost got goosebumps. <laughs> I just gave you my name, Mommy! What? You got me good, but how do you get goosebumps? Good question, Ryan. There's actually a Dr. Ion episode we should watch. He tells us all about it. Are you ready? Yeah. Roll the clip. Hello? Hmm. The lab looks a little different to how Peck described it. Dr. Ion! Are you here? And why is there lightning indoors? Huh, I guess Dr. Ion's really getting into the Halloween spirit. I wonder what he invited me here for. What's that noise? Ooh, it's so creepy in here. I'm getting goosebumps. Look, my fur's standing up on end. Hello? Dr. Ion? Are you there? Ah! Ah! Dr. Ion, why'd you scare me? It's me! Do I'm sorry. It's me, Dr. Acula, and welcome to my haunted lab, the uh, Ionosphere. 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 Uh, uh, okay, Dr. Acula. Why'd you scare me? I apologize, but you see, I'm doing it for science. I'm studying why we mammals get goosebumps. So for that, I'll need some frights. But also, <laughs> some lights. So, let's get Ionic. Oh! I can save you some time, Dr. Ion, uh, I mean, Dr. Acula. As a scientist, I can tell you that goosebumps are the little bumps we get all over our skin when we get scared or cold. Attentively. But have you ever wondered why exactly this happens? I guess not exactly. My theory is when we experience a strong emotion like fear or feel a gust of cold air, our bodies release a stress hormone called adrenaline! 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 Now, adrenaline! this hormone is what causes our muscles to bunch together real tight, causing the ends of our hair to stand up, along with little bumps of skin. Only I don't have little hairs, I have long hairs! So my fur gets all poofy. Precisely. On mammals <laughs> like you or on our human ancestors who were much furrier, this hair standing up on end would work to warm us or even scare away predators. Okay, so you have your theory. Does this mean you have to keep scaring me? 
Well, it is called the stress hormone for a reason. <laughs> Ugh, fine. Let's get this over with. Beautiful. I have to admit, you did a good job with this haunted lab of yours. I've got goosebumps all over. Hey, why are they called goosebumps anyway? That's a really good question. So, people used to think that the bumps on our skin kind of look like the skin of a goose without feathers. Hence, goosebumps. Well, I. Ah, something's on my leg! <laughs> uh, did I do it right, Mr. Dr. Ion? Gus! You scared me! Sorry. I was doing it for science. I think I'm about ready to skip ahead to Thanksgiving. Aw, you're doing so great. I was getting such great data on how goosebumps manifest. <laughs> Doctor, I, I think you've got a draft in here. Ooh, you're right. I mean, that cold breeze is giving me goosebumps too. What do you do when you feel cold? Uh, bundle up? Put my hands under my armpits? Try to get as tucked in as possible? Exactly! I mean, our muscles do it too. They bunch up together real tight to prevent any heat from escaping. That bunching is what makes a little bumps. Okay, I think you've got enough data for your experiment. You can stop with the scares now. Uh, I'm not doing that. Hello? Hello? Where are you? Oh, I'm scared. I'm covered in goosebumps. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the scare has now become the scare. Nice one. I thought it might be good for you to get some first-hand experience getting goosebumps from fear. But now I've got a suggestion. Hmm, what's that? Maybe we can get goosebumps in a more fun way. Say by listening to some great music. Brilliant idea. Did you know some people get goosebumps simply by listening to emotional music? Now, scientists don't know exactly why this happens, but some theorize that the sudden swells and drops in some music is enough to make our body produce goosebumps, as if we'd encountered something shocking. Only this is a lot less stressful than walking through a haunted lab. Ooh. When we feel a strong feeling or a blast of cold air, we may feel on our skin the rising of hair. Our bodies get covered in these really small lumps. There's a name for these things, and they're called goose bumps. See, a long time ago, I guess humans were furry, which came in handy when they saw something scary. Their hair would stand up to make themselves look real tall scaring away predators, the big and the small. Not to mention, when winter came around knocking, our hair would bunch to make a full body stocking. Nowadays, you see this when our cat or dog jumps, but our hair is not short, so unless you see bumps. Ooh. Whoa! This music is so good, it's making my hair stand on end! I'm getting goosebumps too, and it didn't even take a zombie to do it. Yep, and I'm just glad you're not actually a vampire, because scientifically speaking, those don't exist. Don't they? Boo! <laughs> hey guys, so this morning Emma Kate's dressing up and for Halloween. And yeah, so they're gonna this is what they're gonna dress up at school. What you guys think? Oh no! I'm back you ready to save the day? Yep. Let's go, guys. Fly! I'm going to give you a checkup. Oh, okay. Let's see. Beep, beep, and that's from beep, the world. It's beep, beep. Am I good? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. And who is this? We got Steve in the house. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. Who is this? Wait. Where's Ryan? Yeah, wait. Did we forget? I don't Where know. Hey, Stevie. Who is this? Let's, let's take out the mask. <laughs> All right. So this is what they're going to dress best school. And then what are you at, Ryan? Vampire. <laughs> and 
then a vampire. Wait. <laughs> and then what cake today? Mulan. Mulan. Can I tell you what my friend was? What? A vampire just like one. Really? Oh. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating while I'm walking. <laughs> You get a lot of candy cake? Yeah! Ooh, yeah. Ooh, good job! <laughs> Thank you. Hey, how much candy you got? This many. I'll light it up for you. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I'm Alright guys, we're done trick-or-treating. Let's go home! Alright guys, I'm back home and going to Maze, so I'm gonna pick the door because we did it. I'm gonna get some candy. Trick or treat! Trick or treat! <laughs> so if you guys don't know, this is the box for maze that we created. Well, not really a maze. It's just a little play area. You guys want to play this one first? Yeah. All right. Anybody you want to go first can go first. Okay. the fairest of them all. Who's the beautiful and all the mom? Oh, I think it is Kate. <laughs> Who's the beautiful in the mom? You, the beautiful in the whole mall, Emma. <laughs> so you focus on this big spider, so I'm going to fly through it. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? It's that kind of plane. Go into the virus. Oh, so there's one side mm -hmm. that has virus. I'm ready to get these monsters out. Look at the big guy. Ah. Nice. Looking at it. Good job, Emma. Good job. Nice. Oh. And now we're doing bowling. Nice. Yeah. Wow. I love that trick. Wow. Two. Wow. Nice. Nice. Pumpkin, that's not nice, Emma. My trick or treating bucket is not, it's not for hitting. Oh, wait, where did Kate go? Can you tell me the way? Oh. How do I run the way back to my house? Oh, yo, Kate, I think she's in the haunted house. My favorite house. Where is she? I don't see. Maybe she might be here. Knock, knock, trick or treat. Knock, knock, trick or treat. Oh, this is the wheel. You press this button, and then it spins the wheel. What do I get? What do I get? Let's see. It says, You don't want to know. Ooh, scary night, too. But it has some snacks. Yeah. I'm going to eat this one. You want me to help you? There you go. <laughs> it didn't even pop out. <laughs> I think they're all tricky. Wow! Whoa, that's a big one. That exploded out of Yeah. Ah! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah! That's crazy, huh? I 
I see you. Watch it. Yeah, Emma's stuck. Emma can't stop. What am I going to do with these things? Oh, you can just hit these little um, things over there. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, nice. Look how cool they are. I'm going to get this post-it. Mm -hmm. Let me drink it. Oh, be careful, Emma. You're going to turn into a spider if you drink it. <laughs> She's pretending. Hi. Yeah. Oh, Emma's back. <laughs> yeah. Happy Halloween. I'm gonna call my friend. Okay. My friend is a friend. My friend is a friend. Oh, hello, Kate. I'm your friend. Hello, girls. Oh. I'm, I'm, look at my magic book, guys. I need your help. There's something spooky in this haunted house. Okay, well, you better quickly get out before it gets more spooky. night and we're out here trick-or-treating uh but we noticed this house magically appeared behind us i've got a bad feeling about this hello trick-or-treaters <laughs> allow me to introduce myself i am the great and mighty powerful wizard <laughs> Wizard? Don't you mean like wizard? Wizard. It's pronounced wizard. Okay. Well, anyway, I think we should skip this house. I don't think this wizard is gonna give us any treats. Wait. What if I told you I do have a treat for you? The best treat of all. For I have a quest. You see. Many years ago, when I was a young man, I was on a journey to uncover our world's many magical and mysterious secrets to learn the truth behind them. But alas, I entered the quest alone and have been stuck in this manner ever since. Many have tried to secure my freedom from this house, but have never been seen or heard from again. A lucky soul is able to complete the tasks and leave the house. You shall be rewarded with an all-knowing, all-magical crystal ball. Crystal ball? Uh, finally, I have the answers to all my science experiments. You know what? I'll do it. I ain't scared of no ghost. Really? Let's go. <laughs> Step on it. Will he make it? You know, I'm, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't have to go anymore. Uh, the wizard, you can keep your magic crystal ball. Oh, you'll be fine. <sighs> your friends and I will be outside cheering you along. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh. Whoa. Okay, Dr. Ion, describe what you see. The walls of this house aren't like house. When I push in the walls, they push back. 
The walls are elastic. What Dr. Ion is talking about is the concept of elasticity. Of course. Elasticity is the ability of an object to return to its original shape after being pushed or pulled on. So, you're saying that the entire house is elastic? Well, technically, almost everything is elastic, even a steel beam. It can be stretched and pulled and squeezed and then returned back to its original form. See, steel bends so little, and because of that, we can't see it move with our own eyes. <sighs> but some materials, like rubber, have a lot of elasticity, meaning they bend and squeeze a lot before returning to their original shape. <laughs> what? Whoa! Yeah! It's so hard to stand in here. Dr. Ion, what you're experiencing is stress. <sighs> Tell me about it. This experience is very str stressful! Ah, ah, ah. Oh, wait! You mean stress as in the physics sense. The pushing or pulling we do on an object is called applying stress. As I move around through this house, my feet and hands apply stress to the floor and walls. <sighs> Whoa, okay. And the more you stress an object, the farther it has to move to return to its original position, leading to a bigger bounce. So maybe to make it through the haunted house, Dr. Ryan should try to apply as little stress as possible? All right, it's worth a shot. Let's go. <laughs> hey! Hey, it's kind of working. I'm not falling <laughs> over! Ah! Spiders! He might have fallen over again. We have to help him. Oh, this place is so scary. What else could go wrong? Like, a monster's gonna pop out of nowhere and scare me? Ah! 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 Let's run! <gasps> hey, werewolf! It's no use. The elasticity in this house is too much. I can't overcome it. Unfortunately, it seems I'll be here for another eternity. Remember that one time Dr. Ion was experimenting with a rubber band and bag of marbles? Wasn't that elasticity? Oh, hey. Y'all want to see a cool experiment with this rubber band? All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to use this rubber band and attach it to this bag. Next, we're gonna hang it. Using a ruler, I'm gonna measure the rubber band as is. Five and a half centimeters. Next, I'm gonna add some marbles to this bag, causing this band to stretch. This way, we're testing the limits of an elastic object. What do you think will happen when I add too many marbles to this bag? Let's see. Oh! <laughs> It's like a little spring. Every time I add a marble, it jumps up and down, up and down. That's elasticity. Let's measure it. Let's see how long it is. It's about 13 and a half centimeters. Whoa. It's doubled in length. Add some more. <laughs> Dr. Ion is afraid that it might snap soon. Now that's what I call an elastic rubber band. Alpha, remember this experiment. I feel like you might need to remember it one day. Well, it was nice knowing you all. Uh, can you use your magic stick or something? Sadly, my magic isn't what it once was. Alpha, think faster. Uh, wait, I remember now. I've discovered the secret to defeating the haunted house. Elasticity means objects return to their normal shape after stress is applied, right? Uh-huh. But only 
to a certain point. Even the most elastic objects like this house have their limit. If you stress them too far, they'll break. So, are you all thinking what I'm thinking? Why, yes. Dr. Ion, you have to jump as hard as you can. Bounce like a butterfly, bounce like a bee. You're right. This bounce house doesn't own me. I own it. Let's go. Ah! 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 <laughs> okay, maybe this bounce house does own me. No, it doesn't. Take this bounce house. <laughs> it's okay. Wait, it's working. All right, I gotta get out before the house implodes. Let's go! All right, we made it. Let's go! Where are the others? Dr. Ion, you did it! You defeated the haunted house! Oh, you did it. I'm back to me again. You saved me. I'm finally free. Yes! You applied so much stress, the house was unable to return to its original form. You found its breaking point. Whoa! I did, didn't I? No, we did, didn't we? Whoa, you're young again. Anyway, you promised a magic crystal ball. Where is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Close your eyes. Okay. Hold out your hands. Okay. And count from three very slowly. Okay. Three, two, one. Uh, this isn't a crystal magic ball. This is a magic eight ball. Anyway, am I gonna see the wizard again? Not a chance. Gotcha. Thanks for freeing me. Happy Halloween to you all. <laughs> A strange individual. Well, I guess this is still kind of neat, right? Anyway, do we have time for a pop quiz? Magic 8 Ball says, of course we do. Okay, gang, which one of these objects is elastic? Is it A, tennis ball, B, steel beam, or C, a rubber band? This is a trick question, Dr. Ion. All three of those objects are elastic. Nearly all objects have some elasticity, Sometimes it's just so little we can't see the object bend and stretch with the naked eye. Correct! Great work today, everyone! Especially you, Dr. Ion. Ha <laughs> thanks! Hey, gang. I'm making my Halloween costume. Yep, so this will be Ryan's first DIY Halloween costume. You guys are gonna have to see the end results. Can you give us a little hint? Just tiny hints. Um, you probably do it every day. Oh, what do you do? I eat every day. I sleep every day. Any one of those? No. No, I play on my phone every day. No? Okay. All right, guys, think about it, and then we'll wait for the final result. Good luck, Ryan. All right, they're home. How was it? Good. You guys did great. I saw the video. I love it. Good job, baby girls. There was a lot of people this time. Pictures. Really? Oh, I can't wait to see it. Good job. So proud of you girls. And Ryan's still working his Halloween costume. Can you guys figure out what it is? He just started, so it's like a shape. So Ryan's hint was that you do this every day, apparently. Mm -hmm. You use it every day. Yeah, you use it every day. What do you use every day? Clothes. Clothes. Maybe. Maybe it's a clothes. All right, we'll let Ryan work in it some more. You guys, can you guys figure it out? No, I cannot. <laughs> Me neither. Bar. Eyeballs. Eyeballs. I just want to update you guys. So you guys can see it yet? Any hints? I'll give a hint. <laughs> okay, we'll come back. We'll let Ryan work on it some more. All right, we have a mini update here. So Ryan's done. You just have to spray paint it. Can you guys figure this out? Yes, I figured it out. Don't say, don't say. Okay, okay I will. I will. Okay. So it's actually based on, is it a based on a game? Is that why? Uh, it's based on a series. A series of a game? Of, of a show on, on, on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna do 360 degrees. Oh, stand still. Oh, Ryan's gonna turn for you. 
<laughs> it kind of looks like it. I can see. I can see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys figured out? <laughs> so now Ryan's going to spray paint, and then I'll show you guys. All right. Update. Oh. What's all the green stuff around it? It's a little bit dirty. You know? Got it. Got <laughs> it dirty? Yep. It's be a little bit dirty. You guys can guess what it is? Mm -mm. No? YouTube series? I don't watch the series. Do you watch it? Do you really? We only saw one episode. Okay. Is it mainly for older kids? Mm -hmm. Huh? I don't know. Okay. Are you done? Yep. Good. All right, guys. It's the next morning, and this is also Ryan's part of the costume. Any idea what it is? It's obviously going on where? My head. Your head. That's a funky looking hat. But kind of cool. <laughs> So Ryan's cutting off the hat because yeah, he just wants this part here. Yep. Nice. And then he's gonna color this color. That's all we have around the house, so yep. <laughs> it's close enough. Alright, it's all cut. Yay! Love it. <laughs> so you have to color it, but it looks great. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> Awesome this year. All right, guys, everything is done. Ryan got his costume on. Well, his shirt and tie on. All right, and then here is the final look. Oh, I love it! I love it! it looks good! It's so oh, awesome! Okay, I'll give you a bonus. Yay! Yeah, yeah, fantastic! He made it himself. He made it himself. It's so cool. Look. Mr. Toilet. How much candy he got? How much is the candy loot from this year Halloween? A lot. Look, so I filled this whole thing. Okay. Why don't you dump cool. it out so we can actually see the full effect? Yay! The whole thing. And then there's still a lot more in here. Watch. Yay! <laughs> so if you guys didn't know, did we tell you guys? Hey, Ryan, it was uh, what's the name called? Get pretty toilet. toilet and Ryan's friend is a large speaker man. Yeah, large speaker man. Let's show you a picture of them together. They're super cute. I love how so many people were complimenting your costume because it was DIY and there was one house, right? And you came and what happened? Everybody was clapping for Yeah, because you did it all by yourself. Why I'm so happy. I'm so proud of you. It was like seven or eight adults, just like, yay, good job. And so they didn't even know you. They just thought the costume was super cute, right? Yeah. You can eat one or two tomorrow. Hiya, little gators! I was just cleaning up all of the Halloween decorations around the house before Mama gets home. Mama's gonna be so proud of me making sure the house is all neat and tidy and... Oh no! Mama's glass pumpkin! I gotta make her a new one! But how do you make a glass pumpkin? I wonder if 
My friends at the Ionosphere can help. Come on, little gators. There's no time to waste. Welcome back to today's episode. Today, we're going to destroy this pumpkin. It's a perfect pumpkin. Whoa. Can't you go any faster? Almost there. Come on, Doc. You've been at this for hours. When you're done decorating for Halloween, all it needs is your pumpkin. You don't really need my help for that, do you? Patient skill. Another hour, and we'll have the perfect pumpkin. Ugh. Doc. One hour later. I did it. I finished. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever created. I can't look at it. Yes, I can. No, I can't. All right, are you ready to see it? Let's show the audience. And here is my piece of artwork. <laughs> see ya, here's my pumpkin. Oh, Mr. Dr. Ion, I need some help. Oh, hey, Gil. Oh, good, thank you. Dr. Ion was kind of looking for something to do. Uh, I'm going now, bye. I broke my mama's glass pumpkin and I need to make her a new one before she gets home. Hmm. It's not gonna be easy. What do you think, Gil? Uh, Gil? How would you even make something out of glass anyway? If you bend glass, won't it break? That's right, Gus. See, glass is a solid. Unlike gases or liquids, solids keep their shape, no matter what container they're in. It it's hopeless? Oh, okay. Thanks, anyway. Wait, I didn't say it was hopeless. Yeah, glass is a solid, but it's what we call an amorphous solid. Amorphous solid? Mm -hmm. What's that? See, if a solid is amorphous, it means that the little tiny bits that make it up are a little bit looser than those that are a bit of a more solid solid. Uh, I'm so confused. And if amorphous solids get really hot, they get kind of goopy. And then you can shape them into a new glass pumpkin for mama? Oh, please, 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 can you make me a new one? I know someone who can make something better. Let's get Ionic. And here is my little baby. Stop, you can't look at it. Oh my gosh, okay. Shh, shh, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> here we are, glass blowing Houston. If anyone can make Gus a new vase for his mom, it's these guys. All right, Miss Sally, are you ready to give us a quick tour? I'd love to. <laughs> All right, let's go. So we do a variety of things from the small scale like jewelry, which is really fused glass, but we do some with blown glass remnants. And then we do larger things like this beautiful seahorse that Whoa. Patrick did. I'm a geologist, so I do things that look like lava flows and stratigraphy. We also have speckled trout by Patrick Brown. And then we have a beautiful sink that I did. And then this is wonderful that my husband Michael Brown worked on. Then these are mostly products that we make so we can replicate these so people can order these from us. We have uh, twisty cups and our rainbow glass, stimulus glass. Then at rodeo time, we do cowboy hats. Yeehaw, cowboy! <laughs> Oh, look, jellyfish. Aren't these amazing? Thanks for the tour, Mrs. Sally. Now it's time for Patrick to give us a tour of the shop. So everything for us starts over here with the pipe warmer. All of these are used in making glass. The punkies are used for making vessels, bit rods used for adding things to the glass, and then blow pipes to make any bubbles in the glass. From there, we're gonna take it over here to our furnace. This is where we store all of our clear glass. Our furnace is about a 300 pound furnace and it holds all that glass stored at a temperature of around 2000 degrees. Once we have a little bit of that glass, we're gonna bring it over here. We'll shape it up at any one of these workstations that we have set up. And you can see various tools to shape all the glass with. And then from there, we may have to reheat the glass. So we'll travel right back up here to our other furnace, our reheat furnace, and we'll stick the glass back in here to heat it back up. This just works like a big pizza oven, just like back at home. But this one's burning about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. From there, everything, once it's finished, is gonna go into an oven. That oven sits at about 940 degrees. Our oven's right over here. 
and I can open it up for you. You can see it's empty right now, but we're gonna put some stuff in it soon. From here, it sits at that 940 degree marker all day long. Once it finishes, about an hour after that, we can start turning the temperature down. Drops about 50 degrees an hour until it hits room temperature. It takes anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. And so you can see that, you know, in a couple days, you're ready for pickup. It's hot in here. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> How about we pick out some colors with Patrick? Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So this is our color wall right here. We have all the colors that we offer here in the studio. Each one of these balls represents just one color. Whoa. Even though you can see some of them have multiple colors on them. We do that because every color in here with glass is made from a metal oxide being added to the glass. Just like your gems and minerals found in nature, the same metal oxides actually color our glass here. Oh, I wonder what colors Gus would like. Oh my gosh, duh, red and green. Let's choose those two colors. This red, and I like this green, these two. Absolutely. So we'll get that set up and then we'll start working on our project. Perfect, let's go. Whoa, these are such beautiful colors. So exactly, what are they made of? So all of our glass here has a metal oxide added to it to give it the color. Yeah. And here we're making iron oxide to make our green color and gold to make our red. It's actually one of the most expensive colors in glass book because of that. Wow, the most expensive color. And we're about to make some or use them. So from here, we're gonna go get a blow pipe and we're gonna start gathering up a little glass from our furnace and start making this pumpkin. It's a hollow tube all the way through there. This allows for us to actually gather glass on the end here and then blow a little bubble in there in the center. Yeah, so we're just preheating the end of the rod. Glass really likes to stick to hot surfaces. And so we're gonna get this to about a thousand degrees so we can get the glass to stick onto the end of our rod. Well, it must be really hot, huh? So inside here is about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that's very hot. And this is where we store all of our clear glass. When it's full, it holds around 300 pounds. And we keep that at about 2000 degrees. This keeps the glass more or less just like honey. So we can reach in, grab up just a little bit of it and let any of the extra fall off inside. Once I've got glass on there, I'm gonna come off while I keep Whoa. turning that pipe. If I don't turn, you can see pretty much instantly that glass wants to run down and run off the end. Always paying attention to the glass. From here, we're just gonna cool down the pipe a little bit so we can grab up higher. Whoa, look at all that steam. Yeah, so even right here, the glass is still about 2,000 degrees. We're gonna head over to this tabletop right behind you. As I come over here, I'm going to squeeze that glass off the end of the rod, shaping it up into a nice tapered or maybe bullet-like shape. And then once I have that shape, I'm gonna give this one puff and a cap to trap the air inside. We let that heat up and expand. Whoa! And that expansion drives our bubble out and forward through the glass. From here, I'm gonna have you come on over, take a seat and take over. Now, on the outside, it's already turned into the glass that we know every day. If I come over here, already hard, right? Right. But if you put your hand over it, you'll feel it is just like a little oven. Whoa! Right? Still about a thousand degrees. I so feel the heat. We'll go back in, we'll gather more glass on the outside of this, yeah. and we can talk about how to add that color on the outside. Me! So we reach back in, grab up a nice bit of glass, and you're gonna see that as we come out this time, yeah. we're gonna get a lot more glass. After adding more glass, we cool the pipe off again so then I can take over and start dipping our glass into our color chips. I have to make sure when dipping the glass, I get all sides covered. That way, our pumpkin is colored evenly all around. See how easily the glass squishes? That's because it's really, really hot. I don't know if y'all can tell, but this is actually heavy. <laughs> yeah. Once I get a good amount of chips on there, it's time to take them back into the oven and melt them into our glass. After our color chips have melted, we repeat the process and dip our glass again to get a second layer of color on our pumpkin. We then use this shaping tool to give our glass a more round shape. After another pump of air, it's time to go back in the oven. Our second layer of color has now fused with our glass. Once our glass is hot and soft again, we'll move it into this mold and give our pumpkin ridges. Back in the oven it goes. This next step is very important and requires good teamwork. 
And so you can see it takes the village, right? So even though I'm doing all the shaping here, I need another person stop to just be air supply so that I can even inflate this object that we're making blow again. We've gone selectively cooling areas of our vessel so that we can end up with a nice pumpkin vein. We need to repeat the process of heating up our glass and shaping it in order to get it the way we want it. Wow, our glass is beginning to look more and more like a pumpkin. I'm getting ready to break this away, and so I want to make sure that the whole thing's hot and moving just a little bit before we drop it off and add our stem onto the outside. Eric prepares the glass for a pumpkin's stem. With just a few snips here and a few snips there, voila! Our pumpkin is ready for its stem. Whoa. You can tell how hot it is by just how orange the color. Yeah, so you can see it start to stretch. Yeah. As we stretch out our stem there, we're gonna finalize any shapes that we're gonna make on there. Whoa. You make it look so easy. <laughs> well, I've made a few of these before. So you grab on, we cool that little end down right there, give it a little tap. I'll just polish our pumpkin with this blowtorch and done. Gus is going to love his new glass pumpkin. So from here, uh -huh. it's still about a thousand degrees that we put our hands over, we'll feel it's very hot. You might not be able to tell by just looking at it, but our glass pumpkin is still very hot. That's why Eric will be placing it in this oven to slowly cool it off. It's important to slowly cool off our pumpkin so that it doesn't break. So what would happen if you don't put it in the oven and you just leave it at room temperature? Oh, it's probably gonna pop. Well, oh. we would let it sit out here. Yeah. Maybe five minutes later, we'd hear a, a, a shattering of glass. And then all of a sudden it would be in, in little pieces. Wow. Alrighty, y'all. I just want to thank y'all so much for helping us make Gus Mop a new base. I guess I can say I was blown away. At, at the, the hottest, hottest place in town. town. All right, let's go show Gus. Hey, little scientists. We finally took our pumpkin out of the oven and I have a little surprise for you. <laughs> well, look at it. Look at the vibrant colors. Look at the shape. And look at these little ridges. It looks like a real pumpkin, right? Ooh, I cannot wait to show Gus this pumpkin. Let's go drop it off. Yeah? All right, let's go. Better go put it inside for her. 